obviously Maldine DNA was probably the only thing that could have rescued it, um, short of literally having to play every single chord in one go and, and protoing them into the song. So that got me out of a tight spot there. Well, I grew up in a, a house where we only had um, classical music and I was a real classical music bod and I played the piano earnestly and I studied classical music. And then when I came out of university, um, I started to hear acid house music on pirate radio stations and I thought I could do it. And the first other musician I met in that world was Seal. And I went on to write songs with Seal on his first record and through that I met Trevor Horn. And Trevor was the first producer I'd ever met. Uh, and it was a great learning experience uh, watching Trevor comp a vocal and work on a performance. Uh, and um, it, his perfectionism was definitely an inspiration to me, I think. Uh, and after m working with Trevor, I met um, Talvin Singh, the tabla player, and Talvin introduced me to Björk. And through that connection, I MD'd her live band for two tours and made records with her. Um, I also had my own project with Imogen Heap called Fru Fru. Uh, and people who've liked my work have got in touch and as a consequence I've made records with Madonna, Britney Spears and others who, who hopefully you all know. Well I was very proud of um, doing the song Every Time with Britney Spears um, because I got, I got to put my backwards tablas on a song that got to number one uh, which I've been trying to sneak into some other records and people weren't buying it. So. That made me feel very good. And actually, there's a great song I did with Britney on her last album called Out From Under, which wasn't a single, but I love the sound of it. I'm very proud of what we achieved in that one. Um, I'm very, very proud of a song I wrote with Madonna called What It Feels Like For A Girl. The songs that one loves the most of your own work may not be the ones that are the most popular, but um, I'm very proud of songs when they, you know, they get to number one, like Every Time Did It. And that's very important to me. But for instance, um, I'm very proud of a song I wrote with Björk called Unravel, which I still think is um, one of my favourite things I've ever produced. And uh, I'm very, very proud of the Fru Fru album, particularly the song Let's Get Let Go. I think maybe Let Go is the right title, because actually you sort of have to let go of your music. Once, you've, once it's out there, it, it no longer belongs to you. It belongs to the world for them, them to make of it what they will, and you, you hope that what you intended is what gets across. I'm lucky that because people have heard enough of my work, um, and generally love it. Um, it's not like they're expecting me to do something totally different to, to what I do. I mean, it, as long as they aren't um, coming to me just because they've read Billboard and you know seen that I read, uh, you know, I worked on a Britney Spears song or something, because th those are the ones that where it doesn't work because they have no idea of the broad range of what I do. But if people love my music already, then that, that's already going to be great because um, you know all I have to do is, is rise to the challenge of, of what they bring. How did I first discover Meldon? I, would I be right? Did, was it sort of like Peter Gabriel mentioning it or something like that on the internet? I think it was something like that and I was going, woo, and then when I saw this business where, you, where notes were going up and down on the screen, I thought, that sounds very cool. Um, and I was, I was really excited um, by that and um, I'm really glad now that they've moved on to do the polyphonic um, aspect of the, of the program because I think that's really exciting. Um, I think we've all, we're all used to the idea of, of pitch correction and um, of course it still has its creative uses but um, I kind of think we all know enough about the fact that you know you can tune your dog if you want to um, and I think it's now great that we take these things further and use them more creatively and I think there's great potential in Melodyne to do far more than that. I have used it on vocals in one way that I would urge people to consider which is actually in the writing process. I had a couple of occasions where you know we'd go home everybody leaves the building and I go, you know what, I think actually the way that melody turned from that bit to that was, I don't, I'd like it to do something different. And then I can just quickly go in, use Melodyne and kind of redraw the melody and then say to the singer, maybe you should have sung that. And so I enjoy that creative aspect of it where you can, um, after the singer's already gone home, you can suggest an alternative version of the melody and they can absorb it. I'm really enjoying the fact that um, you can do th clever things like if you start MIDI automating parameters, you can change the formants through a sound. We were doing something yesterday where we had this growly synth, a bit dubstepy, and um, 
automating the formants to rise and fall through the note and just creating a really interesting sound, uh, which I loved. Um, and the polyphonic thing has been great. A couple of times it's, it's got us out of um, tricky problems. Uh, we were doing a song for Diana Vickers, actually, where um, we had a, a ukulele, and uh, we decided it was quite vibey and everything, but it seemed that basically tuning a ukulele doesn't. <laughs> so um, even though there was a vibey performance, it was all over the shot. And, and obviously, Meldown DNA was probably the only thing that could have rescued it, um, short of literally having to play every single chord in one go and, and pro tooling them into the song. So that got me out of a tight spot there. And I have been trying recently, um, starting with something polyphonic and then deliberately twisting out a shape with, with Meldown, because I love it when you start hearing the formants change. And, and this sort of fast Fourier transform gone wrong kind of sound. I, I, I think it's a great uh, toy to misuse. Um, try, and, try and use it against the grain. Of course you need tools that are just there to, to sort of manage your audio. You need a good compressor, you need all that kind of stuff, and pitch correction is, is one aspect of that in how we make music in the 21st century. Um, but if that's all you're doing, if you're just using it to kind of rein in the audio, then it's, it's a little bit dull really, and you're missing out on so much. So I'd really encourage people um, to do that. And if you're going to do that, it's, offer, it's a good idea to start early, like literally the first sound you put into the song, start using Melodyne on it and messing it up. Um, because maybe by the time you've got you know, 192 tracks of audio trying to do one final thing on Melodyne, maybe it's going to be hard to fit into the song. But if you build it in at ground level, you, you'll have great fun with it. Um, I think it's generally um, very compatible with my instincts to work, which is that I think the traditional ways that things used to be broken down of, okay, now we're writing a song, now we're producing it, now we're mixing it. And I think those demarcations have all blurred, and that's correct, um, because the nature of hard disk audio and everything, things can change at the last minute. You can even be at the, what you think is the final mix stage, and the singer can go in and say, you know, the middle eight sucks, can I just try something different? And you do, and, and um, everything that encourages you to um, treat the thing as much more fluid is good, I think. Uh, I think that idea that everything had to go like a three-course meal of making a record, write, produce, mix, it, yeah, it's partly like that, but it's not, any, it's not really like that anymore. We've, we've, it's much more flexible than that. I've got some great stuff that I'm involved in. I've, I've um, been producing one song for Jessie J, um, who's coming out soon. She's got songs with Dr. Luke and all these other big and producers, and that's great. Um, I've been working with um, Cass Lowe, who's a UK songwriter, I really like him. Uh, I'm working with Alison Moyer uh, for a record with her, which is really going to be enjoyable. I think we're really trying to um, just make a, a record that we're, we're both happy to, to listen to and um, remind people of the sort of braver sides of what Alison's done in the past um, as well, and we're utterly loving that. And actually, I've been doing um, some songs with a, a Chinese artist based in Beijing, which is really, really fun. Um, because uh, even though she can't speak English and I can't speak Chinese, it's very, very fun and very creative to do. But I, I love everything I do. I, I think I've, I live a charmed life. I, I, I get to um, be in the pr presence of music every day, um, which is a, just a constant pleasure. So. I can't really play the hard luck story with you. I, I just, uh, I, you know, love my life.